by the end of this video you will learn everything how this projection mapping installation was made with matte mapper and by everything i mean one learn how to set up the projection mapping very easily with sophistication number two learn one of the ways to keep everything organized and organized for what exactly yes number three we will make a complete show by the way this show wasn't made to impress someone we made it for us you and me together to learn trizillion of other things in this video that we're about to learn so stay put and hi my name is Zunaid Sabbir Ahmed. Let's start with seeing what do we have here today. We have few boxes. We arrange them into some composition. Place a projector in such a way that's gonna cover the whole surface. Then I set up a basic Sony camera with capture card. This could be done with USB as well. I could also work with a webcam, but let's do it better. Using a Blackmagic ATM Mini to capture Again, this could be easily done with a cheaper capture card as well. Now, let's get into MadMapper. In MadMapper, we go to Outputs. We have a video output made here already. Let's work with that. Let's set the display output in my projector. Then I go to Output and put it to full screen. Now I have my projector projecting something onto my surface. Remember, I told you about some crazy thing about MadMapper? Let's go to Tools space scanner okay this one used to be called spatial scanner they renamed it lately so what this feature does is it scans what the projector is seeing this is so standout and amazing feature in mad mapper i can't tell you how many times i nailed an awesome mapping show using this feature space scanner so i set my camera exposure to manual and a little bit underexposed and then hit start and boom MadMapper starts projecting lines and shapes. At the same time, it starts scanning the images using this camera in capture. So it will capture this for a while, then take a moment to process. Finally, we get what the projector is seeing. At this point, we don't need the projector running. So if our projector is powerful and expensive, we can just put it off and come back when we are done with our show. Oh, by the way, the whole space scanner, camera, capture, this is not necessary for a mapping. This is completely optional, but this makes life easier as anything. I could easily map without space scan, but now I have better understanding of my mapping. Also, if this is a fixed installation, I could just go home with this photo and come back with a crazy show. So let's take a slice with some color and start placing them on small boxes. Remember, we are chill. No projector is running right now. So we can take our time making them, unless client is pushing. Let's make slices for big boxes and group them. Then we start making small boxes as well. To go faster than usual, I'm duplicating the slices, holding Ctrl or Command and dragging. Rather than taking each slice every time, this trick is going to save a lot of time. Let's hide everything and make another slice for Z stand part and let's mask out the parts we don't need. Then I'm going to make a Z slice. Let's put a color and start mapping. After the output is mapped to gross, I draw mask to cut off the parts I don't need. So while working, we reduce the opacity of a lot of slices. So let's select all of them and make them 100%. At this point, we can claim our mapping part is done. Before we go into making shows, let's open up the library and MadMapper library is so awesome. I will add the materials I am going to use onto my library and later tweak it. Before we start, let's select all small boxes, then right click and select create lines. That will give us a new slice with beautiful outlines. Let's rename it. Then we select all the big boxes and make outlines as well. 
Now we have another group of outline, but only for big slices. So I will select two type of outlines I have and make them another group and call this group outlines. Let's turn off everything and see only the outlines. Aha, looks good, right? And yes, now we are somewhat sorted to start making shows. I know you can't wait to get into making shows, so am I. But we had to keep everything sorted as well. So when we are making the magic, people get blown away, not me and you. Now let's go to the juicy part, making a show. Before getting into that, let me share one cool news. As we speak, I'm currently working on a full length video training where I rented a decent house, took 3-4 projectors and used MadMapper to make an awesome building mapping. This will be a premium video training with me, module by module, very easy to understand and nail a perfect house mapping for this year's Christmas or the next. I will add a link in the description. Now let's go and make a show. Let's start with applying some shaders on our outlines. So we will select whole outline group and insert a material from the material panel on the right. I have a shader going on on the boxes outline. Oh, this looks sweet. Then let's select and make something like a strobe. Yes, we can use it from FX, but how about we make our strobe from ground up of our very own. You may learn something new in this process. So I go to solid color, then I go to HSB section. Now let's add a control over V value. Let's set it to BPM. Then we will make the BPM sync flick. Okay, now that we are happy with our scene one, check this out. Let's store whatever going on as scene one or queue. To do this, I will select all the slices and groups, then click here to save a scene. Okay, for the second scene, let's put something in the background here. Looks cool. Let's put a strobe on the Z. Because we took time to make our strobe from ground up. Not the effect, but we will use the effect pretty soon. Let's drop this shader on big boxes. Let's select all the slices and save the scene as scene 2 or Q2. For the next scene, let's work with outlines. Let's make use of this awesome radar like material. This will look cool like a chase. Let's do something with the small boxes now. Let's pick a funky material set on the small boxes. For the ZBG, we put a material and for the Z, we put another. When we feel it's good, then we select all the slices and record a scene. For the next scene, let's use the creepy eye. Let's assign it to the big boxes and change the input zone to make it even creepier. Let's say for the center cube, I want the dead center. Now let's animate the material to take us to next level. Let's animate the pupil size by adding PPM control. Oh, this is dope. Also, let's set the wrench control so that it's in control. Let's save everything as a whole scene or cube and move on next. Next scene, be colorful. Let's select these big boxes and ZPG and apply this material. Aha, this looks fantabulous. And let's apply something on Z. Let's say this groovy one. Let's save the scene and move on. For the next scene, let's say we want to space out a bit. For that, let's turn off all the groups except outlines. Let's try to make a new material this time for outlines. Mm, this looks so-so. Okay, let's use effects on this group. Let's add an effect on the group called outlines. Let's say we pick this effect from here. Now let's select the Z and add effects as well. For the next scene, let's turn off everything. Let's turn off the flash strobe on Z again. Let's change the big boxes material to Raider. Also fix the input area. Now for the small boxes, let's add new materials. Let's go to material library and add that. Let's save a scene again. You know, selecting all the slices and recording a cue. Now for the last scene, let's make something to do with MadMapper logo. 
let's select all the boxes and apply mad mapper logo on it let's also apply mad mapper on the big boxes here we will have to fix the input mapping a bit Remember we went crazy with this earlier? Let's add something trippy on Z on the end shot and some subtle material for the ZBG. Okay, this Mad Mapper logo part looks boring. What can we do with this? Okay, for the big boxes, let's add some effect called zoom. Let's animate the distance parameter. Right click, go to control, then Mad Mapper, then BPM. I select one bit. For the small boxes, let's add another effects called vertex noise. And this looks cool now. Now that my last scene looks something, let's select all the slices and save our last cube. Let's select all the cube we made and change the transition to 0.02 second and also set them is in and is out. And also, let's color them for no reason. Last but not the least. Let's hit Ctrl Shift K or Command Shift K to make a keyboard shortcut so that we can control our cube playback. So we are going to make just one keyboard shortcut. That is our space and that goes next scene. We will be hitting space bar to go to the next cube along with music to make it feel like a show. Before we see what we have made together, you and me, let me share one thing with you. If you have been watching my videos and you think I can bring help to you in any way, Resolume Advanced, Projection Mapping, Mad Mapper, HeavyM, Making Custom Contents, reach out to me. We will sort it out together. Now let's get back. Remember I told you about a video training course where you can learn mapping on an architectural installation, maybe your house or your neighbors with Mad Mapper. I'm sure this video will bring help to you. Click here to check that out and hi, my name is Zunaid Sabbir Ahmed. I'm from a beautiful country called Bangladesh and I compared three projection mapping software in one installation. Click here to check that video. See you there.